Well, welcome back to the New England Cannabis Convention here at the Heinz Auditorium in Boston, Massachusetts. I'm Jimmy Young at the Cannabis Multimedia Network booth. We've been live streaming since about 10 this morning, and it's pretty amazing. First of all, the crowd is not even close to what it's going to be tomorrow. So we expect tomorrow to be much bigger than it is today, but we've had some great guests, some great conversations. Nicole Spiller, one of my Hi. graduates from the Young Broadcasters of America, and uh, a friend is in the middle here. His name is Walter Sullivan. He's an attorney and someone who has been actively involved in the cannabis movement for a number of years now. Am I right? Jimmy, we've had a good time, haven't we? I, I always have a good time, Walter. <laughs> I know that, and I think it's because of the cannabis. <laughs> You know what? Now, Nicole doesn't touch the stuff, so we're, we're doing well, fine. It isn't about, it's about a responsible use of an adult use product. That sounds like alcohol and cannabis. There you go. You know, uh, you know the it's important good thing, thing for an Irish kid to have. The certainly thing, you certainly want to learn what your limits are. Very much so. And, and don't marijuana you, is not for everything, everybody. Correct. Alcohol is not for everybody. Correct. Correct. And have you been reprimanded for using the word marijuana? You understand how racist it's it is? It's cannabis. It's cannabis. Right. And, right? and just to let you know, m City of Cambridge, when they did their ordinance before the city council, they specifically brought that up and amended their ordinance just to say cannabis, exactly for the same reason that's, you just said. That's really, I like hearing that. I wish that lesson would be. What is the connotation with marijuana? Ah, so who's going to give her the history lesson? Okay. So back in the 1930s, not that I was alive, but, you know, I read about it in my history books. Um, the United States government had prohibited alcohol. And, of course, they'd also Prohibition. prohibited... Prohibition. Very good. You read that about that in the book, a, right? She's a college yeah. grad, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Prohibition. Exactly. And I, I've written a blog about how in 1937 I believe the wrong drug was legalized. Uh, you know, I think that if, if we were reversing it all and, and alcohol just became legal in 2016... We'd be going through a lot of the same things with It'd a be lot the exact less, same thing, but without a with a lot less ammunition with science and research. True. Okay, hold that thought. Marijuana. So, the um, Duponts, the Hearst, and Harry Anslinger, I think, is the right the name. Yep. yep. We're all involved in making sure that uh, cannabis was not going to be a legal substance because the those immigrants from other countries, including from Mexico, used it, as did those, um, the indentured servants of African Americans in this country. It's one of the worst freaking parts of our history that I studied. So where is the word like marijuana tied so into that? So loosely translated, it's slang for evil weed. Okay? And they put together this propaganda campaign that was eventually turned into a movie called Reefer Madness. And they got cannabis banned. Now, Hearst, DuPont, DuPont, they were all in the timber industry. They did not want hemp to compete with them. So this, that was their, so it was a monetary and it was a racist term that drove it. And that's why the people in the cannabis industry don't like to use the word marijuana. And it's actually interesting, interesting in the sense that when you think of the reasons why cannabis was knocked out, nothing to really do with the substance itself. It had to do with it imp 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 impacted all other businesses. Right. Yeah, the, the competitive business. factor of it. And it right. just yeah. tobacco. It's a product. Tobacco. Tobacco right. was, it was on the decline. And right. they want to say, well, what do we do? Right. Um, and I think what you see, you see on the, uh, it took 100 years to get to, to develop prohibition. Right. Uh, and prohibition, as we, as we know, was a great failure. So it's also the war on drugs. So in the war on drugs. <laughs> because when you think about it, what one of the things the federal government looked at was the loss of income. Mm -hmm. Taxation is a very important part of government. Yes. Uh, and you look at the taxation that can come about, and it's a new tax right. versus taxing people higher tax rates. Right. Uh, and the reality is that, like alcohol, there are certain people that can't smoke cannabis or uh, intake cannabis, but you shouldn't outlaw it. 10% of the people in the world can't drink. But we knew that was a failure. 2.5% of the world can't gamble. We knew that was a failure to get. So I don't know what the number is in marijuana, but it's probably pretty much consistent with alcohol. Um, and I think it was a fa it's a failure, but it's a long time coming. Uh, and you look today, you look around, you, you look at the people here today. I and mean, we've got people from their 20s to their 80s. Oh, yeah. Uh, and, not, and it's just tremendous. You know, we interviewed Barney Frank this morning. 
That was one of the biggest thrills of my life. Like, he doesn't realize it, but it and really I'm was. sure Bonnie made you sure you knew you were polite to him. I was very polite to Incredibly him. smart guy. Uh, Witty. Oh, yes. And he can come up with one line who's better than anyone no, no, I know. No, he's good. He, he, you know, he's, um, he just had back fusion surgery, so he was in a wheelchair because of the ease of you know, getting him around. But, uh, man, still sharp as attack. And, you know, as a proud liberal from Massachusetts, he's, you know, he's one of my heroes. <laughs> I didn't know you were a liberal. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. You didn't know I was a liberal. <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> In fact, they don't make a left wing far enough out of the field for me. Well, you consider a conservative in Massachusetts a pink or liberal anywhere else. That's right. <laughs> so you're a socialist. <laughs> That's right. Well, and I'll tell you, we can debate socialism, just for the record, but let's not go there. Let's still start, stick with cannabis. Stick if you with don't mind. cannabis. That's not tell a Tell me your role in question four. What happened? What so was I, was, role? I began doing this in 2010, getting involved in the medical side, following it through. I ran the Alcoholic Beverages Control Commission. I saw that when we were giving out licenses for people to have restaurants, that if you had a, a joint on you, it was you were prohibited from holding a liquor license in Massachusetts. And as a member of the commission, we said this just doesn't make sense. Uh, and so you could see that you can see the problems that it caused. I think you also see, looking at the medical side, the way the uh, law was written. You know, they they made it looked at it be a nonprofit, and the whole idea of the nonprofit, people would feel well, the money's going to a nonprofit. Uh, People believe in medical marijuana. I think as you follow the approach, that was on the ballot in 2012, the presidential election. Mm -hmm. So you bring more liberals out to vote. Uh, and you follow that through in 2016. Isn't it amazing? Uh, wasn't as big of a margin. No. Uh, and I, so I've been following those, working with the petitions and so forth. And so I, re so I began representing clients in the medical and recreation field as well as helping investors figure out where to invest and working with communities. It's been it's been an amazing ride, going from alcohol to cannabis. Yeah, <laughs> on a regular basis I do. Oh no, sorry. Yes, indeed. It's uh, just part of life now, and it, it's all about moderation, Walter, and learning limits. And by the way, as a parent, setting boundaries for the kids that we all know. The kid's job is to push up against those boundaries. What can I get away? I with? have zero experience with that. Yeah, I know you were such boundaries? an angel. You have no boundaries. <laughs> She was an angel. <laughs> yep. So Total was I. walk in the park. So was I. Trust me. It was not, it was not so pleasant. So were you an angel? I think that compared to my older sister, I might not have been an angel because my older sister paved the way and they were like, oh, raising a daughter is not hard. Look at this. We don't have to be so strict. And then I came through and they were just You got away out. with murder and your older yeah. sister was probably so bold. Exactly. You just told my life story. And that's what I have. A, my youngest son, if I had him first, I might not have any other kids. Uh, partially because he's That's what they feel about me. My dad's like, you're my karma because you are like a little boy getting into trouble and like being a rebel. And then your sister was like an angel. So he's like, you're my payback. Like you were what I was waiting for, that karma, because he was like a terror. That's what my mother said to me. My mother told me I was getting paid back tenfold. Yeah. Uh, for the way I was with her. Um, so that's why you need cannabis is to relax you after you go out of the house. Or, or my dad needs it to relax him from all the gray hairs I gave him. That's, and and <laughs> I love get your mother. Cannabis, and I happen no, and I love I love your mother too. So I don't want to again just make it all about dad here. Uh, I love your mother too. It was no, she she just tolerates me more. Yeah. Whereas like my dad will just be like, all right, whatever. Like I just give in to every, everything, and my mom will kind of like still try and parent me a little bit. That's, so. Has that been a failure? What? <laughs> Parenting you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Make sure when you turn to Nicole, you bring your microphone with you. He's right. doing it. He's exactly. doing it. No, I, I thought know. I kept it on the side there, Jimmy. I know you're no, very, you were very trying to be cool, Walter, which you are, like by this. the way. Jonathan Sloan says hello. Hey, I wore a suit for you and everything, I know Jimmy. You did. And look at the way you come. Well, that's exactly. I'm a walking, talking billboard now. This is, you know, it's all about brand, okay? It is about marketing and, and branding. And, and by the way, I've never been a stylish guy, and I've always been painfully unhip. Is that not correct, Nicole? We made fun One of me say. back in the day, right? One would say. Yes. One would say. And, and, and didn't... Did you teach me to dance one day or something? Wait, did we do anything? I have no student? recollection all right, of all right, a dance so I'm gonna let it go. Let's let it go. Macarena. Ma Macarena. No, it wasn't a Macarena, but <laughs> I remember that do it first. No. no, thank um, you. Let's go back to law because... One, there's been a consistent in the emergence of the cannabis industry, and it is the power of the attorney. 
because you are interpreting new laws and new regulations and because the way the law is written and the way the Cannabis Commission has set up their rules, uh, people have to get their host agreements in place before they can even get a license or even apply for a license, correct? Yes. Right. You can't even I mean, apply until you have an agreement. I mean, I think what you find, so... Um, wow, there's an, there's an announcement. That's okay. They said thank mind. you for coming. We can still talk. I can, you we know, can, we can just talk so, right in the I mean, I think what you find, so in 2012, with the passing of medical, uh, the Attorney General, Martha Coakley, required, told all the communities that you need um, to put a zoning law in place. You can't prohibit medical marijuana facilities being located there. What the regulation did, passed by the Department of Public Health, which I argue basically bans bans medical marijuana from communities is that you had to obtain a letter of support, a non-opposition from a community right. in order for you to do business. And what you saw the communities do, because at that time we've already had um, gaming law in place, which specifically had a host community agreement attached to it. Uh -huh. And so you saw the local communities, hey, wait a minute, this is a way for us to make money. And I think you know what you see today is that the legislature legitimized the host community agreement and included it within the statute with the understanding that they would make it fair. And it's supposed to be five years and up to 3%. Right. And we know what's going on with that now. Right. There's been a, even uh, fast and loose is how Steve Hoffman de describes some of these agreements. And now he's gone back to the legislature looking for more clarity about the power of his commission over those host agreements. And that becomes the issue. He doesn't have the power. They have a problem with it. But what do you do? That you know that if you can't assess penalties, you can't do something. Right. What Where's power do you have? How do you create leverage you know, and, to get them to follow know, the rules? And one of the things the commission was, you know, somewhat a couple of commissioners were looking at was maybe we just don't approve the application. Well, that you know, you're harming the people applying. You know, that doesn't make sense. Right. And you're also harming the tax benefits you'd get from this too. And that, I mean, isn't that well, should not be driving the bus? And I think when you look at this, um, well. The host community agreement. Right. That when you look at the host community agreement, it talks up to 3% mm -hmm. to cover the community's costs for five years of what it's going to be like having this new industry in town. Yeah, but it's those, extra, it's right. those extras, think, you know, the, the extra donation to this fund. Well, and I think and that, that becomes the issue in the sense of having this extra money. The idea is a good idea. You know, you're going to have this new industry. Let's help you fund it. But then you're going to fund it yourself five years later. And then all of a sudden it turned into something else. Uh, and I think that's a serious issue. You have to donate here. You have to donate there. And right. I think one of the things you find, the industry signed off on that. And I'll give you an example. Um, I, a town so is that? do you think that's a mistake by the industry signing off on that? I think it started with the medical. Yeah. And, you know, because it was rough. You know, everyone was rough riding. They just wanted to get in the business. Right. I think it became an issue. I'll give you an example. Um, a community west of Cambridge. Yeah. There were two medical marijuana dispensaries looking uh, to open in the town. Yeah. One, one dispensary offered 3%. The, the other dispensary offered 6 They went with the 6 Now, the problem you run into is Cambridge didn't really have a host community agreement or a percentage. So if you're in that other town and less than a mile away is a dispensary in Cambridge, how can you compete cost-wise? Right. And I think the reality is that that just shouldn't have been allowed to happen. And you, and you would think the way the legislation was drafted, the idea was to keep that from happening. But, you know, you hire a lawyer. A lawyer can tell you anything you want <laughs> as long as you pay him. Uh, <laughs> Up front, I might add. It's a good you always get that retainer, oh Jimmy. Oh, my goodness gracious. <laughs> have I learned that one? Have I learned that one? So what do you think of the article in, 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 in the, the Globe? Globe? I knew you were going to go there. Um, you know, first of all, let's, let's give credit to the spotlight team of the Boston Globe. They are some of the best journalists not not and again not so much the ones that are writing all the articles yeah. now I'm just talking about reputation wise and through the years the role of the journalist in our world as a kind of a cost checking and a, and a fact checking and a it's important to have these kinds of I mean a journalist the job and the spotlight team are yes. still truly journalists correct and, and by the way, a rare breed, I got to tell you. Because, in this industry today. Right, right, because, you know, I get it. It's really more of an entertainment thing. And, and these days, you know, those lines between church and state have really become 
let's just say, uh, what's the word? Wishy-washy. Opacity. <laughs> you get to, you know the Opaque. opacity line where you okay. go from 100% down to 70%? Translucent. Translucent. Yeah. She's got it. I like that one. Like she's the college graduate. I have a college education. I'm the education. one who has a head injury. All right? <laughs> anyway. And we know. No, no, no. no. <laughs> so. Um, Another adjective. I'm over here. <laughs> that's right. Well, no, we what I had her in the middle. What I had, no, no, no. What I need now is, <laughs> I get what you're saying now. Um, what I need now is my train of thought was going to where? Nicole, because this is what I need. I need help when I lose my train of thought. What were we talking about? What were we talking about? You were talking about the church and state lines being a little Journalist blurry. Journalist, the spotlight piece. Okay. You brought them right back. That's right. No. It's, it's, That's it's, why I'm here. By the way, there's quite a few uh, people out there helping me get right back. Let's just say I've got a whole team out there that are pulling and for me. You can find things in this in this building that can help bring you back. Yes, I know. And 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 maybe that's why I'm down at the end of the day now, and it's kind of like, you know, my blood sugar's down the whole nine yards. Um, Some nice CBD so, will solve that. So, <laughs> so the uh, what they're talking about bringing in the big. The big investor, the big companies, we're already seeing it with Netta being sold to Wrigley, right? The guy, right. the Wrigley guy. Um, we're seeing, look, I interviewed Tilt Holdings. I mean, they're one of the largest in the country. And Cambridge Roots. Cambridge Roots. Uh, so we're seeing, how can you not, Steve Hoffman says this, I believe in a free market. So, I mean, I mean. Do, are we concerned about it because we care about those who have been in, um, imprisoned unfairly and aren't getting a shot at getting uh, licenses in any way? It's been tough, but this is capitalism. This is this is kind of how it works. Investors don't necessarily discriminate. It's all the same color green, right? You know, and if you can't put together a proposal that's a good business proposal, it doesn't matter what color you are. And I think that's really where, and, and this is part of what the discussion the commission has had is that over mm -hmm. the last few weeks on economic empowerment is that it may not be just about getting getting people that were hurt by the war on drugs into business, but maybe make sure that they're able to work in the industry right. to develop. Which is what I talked to Tilt about. Right. And they are they are implementing that or they're to start and it's important that, you know, socially responsible capitalism is something that you can really Embrace and respect. Right, it's good governance. Remember it's Wainwright Bank? Yes. Yeah, they were they were all about social Doesn't responsibility, fun. capitalism. They're no longer in business, though. No, they're not. <laughs> they sold. <laughs> they sold to Easton. Uh, was it? Um, oh God, I remember. I met Jan Miller was involved with it. He's with Eastern Bank now. I yes. don't know if you know him, but um, let's get back to some of the laws. And what are the? Ex what, what do you think we're going to be? Let's talk about the social clubs because that's been a constant here. What's your vision? What do you think I mean, you're going to see? I think if you look at it, we've We've passed a law that that has legalized marijuana, allows it to be sold. Cannabis. Cannabis. Sorry. Thank you. I apologize. All right. That. I'm going to have um, a kangaroo court. I'm a former prosecutor. A court. So I know you are. We called it there. <laughs> but um, when you look at, um, oh, my God, now I've lost my train of thought. See that? Uh, but, Social clubs. But I think yep. we've now legalized it. Yep. You can't smoke it in public. Right. You can't smoke it in Section 8 housing. You can't smoke it in federally subsidized housing. You can't smoke it in condos. Maybe we you don't need to smoke it anymore. No. but there's, uh, Right. And that's what. Um, so, one, you got to give people a place to partake. You can't drink in public. We've right. given people bar, bar oh, rooms and restaurants to go Open bottles of beer in the um, car and all that. And no, we don't want to that. To give an example, like, so I... Sorry for keep going back to Cambridge, but one of the th that's one of the things Cambridge is looking at, and they're not talking about smoking in public, yep. but potentially there are some candidates in Cambridge, some councillors that are saying, maybe we need to do a home rule petition that we can set up areas for people to be able to consume cannabis products and not be in violation because... Like a designated smoking area. Well, yeah, exactly. When but you they step don't outside smoking, of a But that's facility. exactly right. So the whole idea is this. Why don't we set up areas... For these people to be able to go, and 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 and, and partake, uh, the hard part is is that you know we do we have designated smoking areas for cigarettes. Maybe there should be designated smoking areas to be able to smoke marijuana as well. I mean, I, I, I will admit, when I have had a, you know, little civil disobedience, I do search out the smoking areas because the cigarette smoke is a stronger smell than. And by the way, I vape. I do not smoke anymore. So, I. That's you look I like am. a vapor. Of course I am. Yeah, I remember when the first time I went to med, the first words to my patient advocate, the, and I don't even like the other words, so I'm not going to use it. The patient advocate was, I don't want to smoke this anymore. I want to find out another way to get the same effect without putting smoke in my lungs. And that's really good because what you try to explain to me, vaping, dabbing, 
that is not a combustible source. Right. You are heating oil and, to a temperature and, to create a vape. Right. The vape. So and that, you know that, that causes the same thing. Did you know hookahs aren't combustible either? They're just warm They're set and up cold. the same way. Right. So maybe the hookah lounge is the model that they could look at. And that's right, because they're not covered under the smoking ban. The hookah lounges. See, they're and because it's not a because the statute says that you can't smoke a combustible product in public or in places of public accommodation. Yes. So, but in how some cigar bars that, get away with it. Well, there's actually a law that allows a cigar a cigar bar, uh, and that it allows that as long as more than fifty percent of the funds, the majority of the funds, are coming from cigars versus food and alcohol. That it's okay to have. So it's like very specifically regulated. Right. And it is because people do like their cigars. Uh, the problem is, I don't know, how, you know, can you really truly make a cigar bar that the majority of the funds are coming from cigars and not from alcohol and food? I don't, I don't know for sure if that's possible. But I have a friend that's looking to hire me to do that. Uh, because there are people that like to go and smoke a cigar, would like a scotch or a port or something, and really have a good time. And I think the same thing is true with, with cannabis, is the ability to go with other people. It's worked in Amsterdam. It's worked in other countries. You haven't seen a problem. There are a bigger problem with bars in Boston, as we can see from the late news stories, right. than you're going to have with cannabis, on-premise cannabis clubs. Right. And, and, and the Summit Lounge out in Worcester, I visited it for the first time. Two nice family. The, they're really business. nice. I love that it's a family business. It is. The mother know. and father are there working with them. I love it. And Keeping Kyle's, them in line. And Kyle's a great guy, and he's got two other brothers that are already in the business. Yeah. Not necessarily local, but they're in, they're in the business, um, and that's a private club, and they get away with it because it's private and all that. But they 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 don't have a food license, but they know the importance of having prepackaged items around, just in case you yeah. get those munchies, because we all know that might have some effect. And you know, you can charge a premium for for a good bag of Doritos. Oh man, Doritos! I, the, you know the prime thing. We had a the class. ranch style. What style do you like? Oh no, no, I'm I'm a traditional. You're ranch. a traditional. Yeah, you like, you ranch? like ranch? Yeah. He's a traditionalist. How much uh, is <laughs> You like the nacho cheese? No, I original flavor. Yeah, the Doritos nacho mm -hmm. cheese. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yes, sorry. The ranch has got a nice little bite to it, though, doesn't yeah. it? See, I the don't cool do any blue. spicy food. Nothing spicy. I don't no, like no, anything. I don't like spicy anything. Doritos are not spicy. Okay. <laughs> no, Doritos are not. But if you so no, cool, the cool ranch, ranch, ranch is not. Yeah, they spicy. have those other ones. They got the, the what sweet are the and chili. The pepper. Oh, yeah. chili pepper. Not yeah, chili. Phew, they had it. I walk <laughs> by it and I get indigestion. Um, we were talking yeah, about but, the law. So like, I mean, <laughs> it's funny. So when the whole talk about Social uh, social clubs came yeah. up. I was talking to one of the commissioners, and uh, the former commissioner of Boston, police commissioner of Boston, was telling her, I smell marijuana, cannabis. No, let's say for him, it was marijuana Probably, everywhere. Probably, yeah. Uh, you know, it's all over the place. And yeah. I said to the commissioner, I said, I have no idea what Boston Public Common he was walking through, but I've been smelling cannabis in Boston Common my whole life. And it's been it's been powerful, so you can't blame it on the legalization of marijuana. Correct. Yeah, Cannabis. I, I, I will say this about it, though. <laughs> I will say this about it. I caught myself on that one. I will say this. I'll give you my own little anecdote. Going to a Celtics game, uh, my favorite team in Boston, and going into the parking garage and smelling it, walking to the garden and smelling it, after the garden, not in the garden, after the garden, driving home on the Mass Pike, I smelled it from a car coming, you know, next to us. So because people recognize it, oh, it's legal now. I can do this. I'm not going to get busted. I'm not going to go to jail. I'm going to get a ticket maybe well, or I'm going to get it, my license taken. So I actually travel around doing talks to different groups and, yep. and law enforcement's there with me. And one of the things law enforcement says, look, at we, especially near the city, we got so much else to worry about. Oh, absolutely. You know, unless you're in our face, more than likely, it's still illegal. You to right. smoke and to partake in no, cannabis in public. They're using it as an but, education. But the thing. same token, when you think about everything else going on, we it's just... The least of their worries. It's the least of their worries. And so right. are they going to bother you if you're in Cambridge Common, Boston Common? I mean, they More barely they barely bother you if you're shooting up. They see that as like a... <laughs> Like, that's kind of your own prerogative as long as you're not bothering anyone. We have other things to worry about. That's I reported that I saw people shooting up when I was in Quincy recently. Oh, there by the Quincy Center T station? No, it was um, inside one of the buildings because I report in um, a building in Quincy sometimes. And um, someone was shooting up in the stairway, and I called the police and said what was going on. And they were like, well, what are they doing? Are they, like, going to 
are they doing anything? And I was like, I mean, they're shooting up in the hallway, and they were like, eh, I think they're, I think they'll just leave you alone. I'm like, okay. They didn't well. say, that, oh, they're probably diabetic or something like that. No. No, they know exactly what's going on, <laughs> right. but they have other things to worry about, things that are more I, urgent. Yeah. I was, I, 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 I was on one of the buses going to uh, Quincy Center, and. I, yeah, I love public transportation in Boston. I think, you know, contrary to people, well, in all, we have a good system. I'm listening to these people behind me, a uh, girlfriend and boyfriend talking, and another kid gets on the bus, and he's telling his girlfriend, hey, I overdosed the other night, and he saved me. He brought me back, and he didn't steal my wallet. <laughs> and then the other guy said, oh, I overdosed last night. And I'm like, wow. I mean, you're looking at this. <sighs> you're looking at the problem with opiates. Yep. You look at the right. problem with heroin. And here we are putting up this thing about cannabis. Right. Yeah, it's so, we have so minor. Many other problems. Yeah. Right. That's great. You know, Walter, this is one of the reasons why we immediately bonded, because I totally think the same way <laughs> you do on that, too. I mean, and we've spent far too much time to uh, do this. You know, you, now, you're on the radio. You know what it means when they do this, right? I know he's he has a very good circle with his yes, with his finger well, there. He, you know he's a you know Canton wrap High it School, up here. Curry College. He knows how to give a what. He knows how to do a rap. He has and a good president at Curry College. Plus, plus he also knows nice Irish kid. Plus he also knows <laughs> that I tend to go on and on and on and and you know. And, and you put us together. That's right. We could be I, here all that's day. That's what he's saying. Okay, get the <laughs> these guys need their own show. Real quick before you go, you are doing a show. You do a podcast. Tell I, me about it. Where I is do. It I that? do a podcast on yep. radio entrepreneurs mm -hmm. called In the Weeds. Uh, it's an wait, internet. Wait, 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 wait. Is it just In the Weeds, or is it In the Weeds with Walter Sullivan? I'm a co-host, so I can't be Walter Sullivan. Okay. Uh, and it's on Radio Entrepreneurs, and it's really talking about brings entrepreneurs on that talk about how why they got in the business. Yep. Um, and we see a lot of ancillary businesses coming in. You know, this is why they decided accountants, builders. It's amazing packaging, the industry packaging, packaging, packaging. And I actually had I actually had the packaging person on yep. um, um, on 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 the show. And it's amazing. You know, I'm sure they discuss packaging is how it has to be child tamp, child child proof. Right. Uh, we have to worry about dogs and as well. Wait, we talked about dogs early today. Let me talk about child proof just for a second. And this this is isn't me. This is Jimmy. This is me. I'm carrying on because you, you know this is a, a pet peeve of mine because I've got arthritic fingers. I have really a lot of problems opening up child proof. Now, there are people out there who probably think, well, that's because I never grew up. But that's another story. Point being, there are certain containers that you can get that are childproof that are also helpful for people who have arthritic hands. Well, you look at, you know, you look at medications that you get today at the pharmacy, yep. that the cap is childproof. But if you flip it over, right. so it allows someone in your position... right. To, to not to, use, to be I get, get someone my, else to open it for my you. mail order right. prescriptions um, come that way, and then you just you just more protective on on on, right. on where you put it. It's about responsibility. Yes. It's about acting like an adult because it's an adult product. Yes. I mean, you look at parents have parties at their houses you, with no, alcohol everywhere. Yes, they All do. of a sudden, they wake up and their two-year-old child's drunk because they left because they left the drinks there, and the kid doesn't know. Okay, I, well, I think we have to go though, don't we? No, 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 no. Nicole's ready to leave. Nicole, she where are you cleared. going on us? She got cleared. She went out of. She was out of frame, right? And she checked to make sure. She's. I told you, she is. She's well trained. Now, Nicole, no a, one's going to watch our show now. Pro. She is a real pro. Walter, Jimmy, they're not going to watch us now. All right, well, going? you know, we could just keep going. Well, we. But, I know. But you also know the power of the the technical guy. You mean you can make me look good, <laughs> and sound good, <laughs> and more importantly, kill your kill your microphone. All right, so I think we're not rap though, guys. Is it? Did you guys we have stop two more interviews, right? Two more interviews? Oh, uh, we're, we're still, still on. on. Yeah, it's good. Frickin' Frack is still going. And I have uh, and I have two more interviews. Well, just two people, but one interview. Two more two people. people. Perfect. All right. Hey, Jimmy, it's well, a pleasure. Hey, you're awesome. And you we enjoyed what? it. We'll do this Make again. Make sure you know my phone number so that I can be coming on to your show. And then you can And I'll get you some show. cannabis. What? Oh, you already have more than enough at I home. Really How are your plants doing? It's, I do not grow. I have a black thumb. And I'd rather throw money at it than grow it. See you, Jimmy. All right, Walter Sullivan, thank you.